Well, he is the lead pastor of Dwell Church in Allen, Texas, and an amazing psalmist and worship leader. We're so thankful to have on the podcast with us, David Binion. So good to have you with us, Pastor. It's wonderful to be here. Well, we just did an interview on Encounter today where you, you dropped some bombs on us uh, concerning the most Luciferian worship that w could ever be offered. And it's interesting that you worded it as you worded it that way. Luciferian worship. I was thinking, of course, of the Grammys. That's the first thing that comes to my mind when I think of uh, Luciferian worship. But then you you point to the church as as the people who who could potentially offer a more Luciferian type of worship. First of all, did you see what happened in the Grammys, and and what were your thoughts? What were your thoughts about that? Okay, I mean, the world is the world. Yes, we can't blame, we can't blame the world for being the world. Come on, it's like they they need Jesus, and we. Uh, to to the defense of some, we need to be a light in a dark place, mm -hmm. but not uh, not at the cost of compromising our light. That we think we have to uh, somehow be part of the culture in order to be. It's like be in we, the room. It's like yeah. I mean, it's okay to be in the room. I don't know if I'll ever if I'll ever be. Uh, in, in the room for a Grammy. I, I've had some close calls. Uh, I remember when I was a teenager, I, I got a, in the, in the Christian awards, I got a song of the year when I was like a teenager. Oh, come on. Um, what was that? But, uh, there was a song called Oh for a Thousand Tongues. Okay. Amazing. Uh, it was recorded. It was recorded by tons of people. It was first recorded by a quartet. Uh, so, you know, imagine it was, uh, it's, was it was four times before. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so Sorry. it was, um, uh, so, I, you know, again, I feel like, uh, it, it really happens in our heart, whether or not we get to a place of compromise. Mm -hmm. It's like get close proximity where, uh, all of the attention is given. And, uh, and it's, you know, it's like as music people, uh, all of us want to achieve and be successful in what we do. Be heard. And then I mean, that's why you write the song, be right? Heard. You right. want it to be heard. Right. Yeah. You, right. You want it to be heard. And then when you see the success of others and you were like, okay, what about me? But what about me is kind of like the, mm. the son, the other son, not the prodigal son, but the other son uh, that was stayed home and was faithful and did everything he was supposed to do. But yet the prodigal is the one that gets all the attention when he's, He's was he was lost, but now he's found, and and the the one that stayed home and stayed remained faithful sits there and thinks, well, what about me? What about my award? You know, uh, so I think that happens in the hearts of people when they see success and they want to achieve. And I said this in the in the previous interview that you're never more Luciferian than when you are standing on a stage leading worship, desiring to be famous. Wow. Is it really, is it, that's when worship gets uh, off, uh, out of focus. Mm -hmm. It's like suddenly, it's like the attention we draw, we love to draw the attention to ourselves in the name of Jesus. And we say all the right words, but we, there's somehow this fleshly thing begins to happen and we like the attention. I will tell you, when I was 18 and I received this award, I remember uh, the, the immediately the people, uh, the artists started contacting my publishing company saying, we want another song, we want another thing. And so I'm like, I didn't even know, at the time, I didn't even know I could get royalties. And I was getting these nice royalty checks. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and so I'm like, oh, oh, so I could write another song and I can even make more money. And I remember even then, I'm like, I wrote this song. It was my uh, discovery of worship that caused me to write the song. Um, I'll just kind of tell the story real quick, if that's okay. Sure, yeah. Uh, there, was a, there was an old hymn, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, mm -hmm. the triumphs of His grace. And so I was discovering worship. And I won't go through the whole story. It's too much to tell. But it was I remember hearing in that day, the first time I heard, I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice. And 
other songs like Oh the Glory of Your Presence. And these songs were being written and, and I felt like I was a magnet to these songs. Things were coming to me that would help shape me and get me on this journey that is worship. And so I remember flipping through uh, a hymnal and I saw that old hymn, Oh for a Thousand Tongues. And I thought, God, that's how I feel. I discovered his presence. I discovered privately in my prayer life how he would come as I worshiped. And uh, I was like, God, that's how I feel. If I had a thousand tongues, I'd use every one of them to worship you. If I had a thousand hands, I would raise them all to honor you. And so now I'm getting the invitation to write the next song. And I was like, I, I, I made a choice intuitively and I really didn't even understand fully what was happening. I was being tested and didn't know it. Mm. And, and, and I made a choice. I refuse to write for the awards. Wow. I refuse to write for uh, the attention. I wrote to express my heart of worship and that's where I will remain. And I was, again, I didn't even have wisdom of, uh, it, it, maybe I did have wisdom, I don't know, but I was able to make a choice. It was, it was, a, it was, a, I was at this crossroads and I, and I had to choose. And uh, I chose what I think was the, the way God wanted me to go. And I've been blessed by that choice throughout my life. And, and now I'm 60 years old. And it is still my zeal. It is still my mm. passion. It never gets old. It only gets deeper. It gets greater. Uh, and 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 then the Lord starts giving you these extraordinary visions to help uh, entice you even into the deeper and higher places of His presence of revelation. So that's my wow. answer. As you're as you're sharing that, I think of the Oscars, for example, and we see this devolution in the entertainment industry as the same time we see them writing for the awards. These, these movies that become more and more grotesque, more and more risque, more and more demonic, they're writing yeah. specifically not for the audience, not because it's what people want, because they're writing for one another, for the awards. And that's what we're seeing often in the church. This devolution of worship takes place when we're writing for the applause. And it's not just worship, by the way, it's preaching too. There's this unconscious Pavlovian response that when we get the likes and we get the clicks and we get the subscribers and the followers, oh, if I do this, then they'll like this and I'll get more and have more influence. And how, how, do, you, how do you break out of that? You broke out of it by discovering having a revelation, I guess, of just real worship. I, uh, bringing people to a real encounter versus um, just an experience that takes you to a, a goosebump. And you think, oh, Jesus is here. And you're like, uh, uh, there, there are deeper places that he's inviting us to. And once, you know, I, I shared with you about the five and a half hours under the piano, uh, where God just invades your world. And you can't, you just, you just can't go back to way things, to the way things were. Uh, and it, it, it marks you. It's like Jacob left to walk with a limp for the rest of his life. So it, for me, that encounter has left me uh, with the limp. I, it's like, I can't, there, there are moments where seasons of success came and like seemingly overnight uh, album sales are just blowing up and you're like, oh my God, what, what's happening? And I found myself, okay, okay, let's, uh, my 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 oversight pastor Bishop Joseph Garnington preached a sermon 30 years ago that helped me stay on course. Uh, the title of his sermon was "Dance with the One Who Brought You." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said, "What what got you here is what'll keep you here." Wow. And so I so I find myself uh, I don't want to get pulled into. So so this one particular thing happened. We had this kind of overnight thing happened with the success of one of our albums. And I found myself, okay, I can't, I would, it just, it's like we would go to airports and everybody in the airport knew you. And, and, and you're like, how in the world is this, is it even happening? So I found myself just thinking, okay, I just have to concentrate on 
carpool for the kids to school. Mm -hmm. I just have to think about life. I just have to think about spending time with my wife and realize that if, if favor does come, it comes from the Lord and I can't get pulled up into the favor. That all belongs to him. And you have to live with that concept uh, or you will, it will affect you wow. in, in the best of circumstances. And it's because I had been marked by him early on that I uh, was able to discern the time when, when the when, when the success came, because what success will do, will do, it'll just get magnify who you really are mm. already. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that, I don't know if that's where you wanted to go with this conversation, yeah, no, absolutely. but it's, just, it's a very, it's a very uh, cautious thing that, that we have to be careful in, in our call that we, uh, I just see so many people get so caught up in this celebrity, uh, whether it's worship or it's the pastor celebrity, mm -hmm. all, all of this stuff. It, it, it affects every walk of life when success comes. We see it again with all these people in in Hollywood and, and what success does to them. And uh, Yeah. Wow, and such wise words, especially for every minister and every everyone who aspires to lead people. Leadership must be seen to be followed. And as you as you obey the Lord and humble yourselves before them, he will exalt you. And how you behave in those moments of exaltation are key for your future. And we've seen a lot of leaders, and even going back to this, and you can answer this, I just had this, or not, and you, I just had this question on the top of my head, because I don't know all the information about this whole Grammy Awards thing and who was there and what was going on. You don't want to not be in the building because we don't want the Benedict option. We want to be in the world and not of the world. We want to be shining our light. <clears throat> when we're a part of things like that, what should the proper response be? I mean, how do we respond in general? Uh, if, if you were at the Grammys and, and that kind of thing would take place, what do you do? What do you I do? will tell you, I will tell you what I would have done at this past Grammy Awards. Mm -hmm. If I were there and the demonic display thing began to, to be invited to the room or to have, be at, uh, on the ballot as an, as, as a potential winner, of course you want to go and represent the kingdom. Yes. Uh, but I would have, I would not have made a big display, but I would have exited the room. I would not stay. I, you know, I will say the same thing. I remember going to see a movie once, and uh, uh, we thought it was a safe movie, and our five-year-old son was with us. And in the first two or three minutes of this show, the things were happening, and my five-year-old said, I think we should probably leave. Wow. So, so for me... Uh, I, I would have, I would have, I would have said, I think we should probably leave right now. Uh, I would not want to, to uh, endorse by my presence that I can go along with this. So that's what I would have done. And we're not Monday morning quarterbacking here and casting dispersions on anyone. No. I'm just curious as to, because we're going to be faced with these kinds of things. And not just, not that the average viewer will be invited to the Grammys, but you will be invited to things and, and going into movie theaters. And it's important how to, to know how to respond with dignity, with grace, not in a judgmental way, but to let your stand be known. Yeah. I just think that there are things I've been, I've been in the company of Christians where conversations at the table became very carnal. Hmm. And I just excused myself. I, it's like I wouldn't, I would, I see someone across the room and I'd say, oh, I gotta go say hello to someone. And I would just get up and never come back. Just because I, I would, something in me was like, I can't let that in. I can't yeah. let that in. I've, There's I've this noticed. principle that, no, go ahead. Go ahead. But there was this principle that Bill Johnson taught about, uh, he talked about when the dove lit upon Jesus, when John the Baptist uh, saw the dove. John didn't know who Jesus was. He was his cousin. Now, there, were some, there was something about Jesus that John was aware of. Even in his mother's womb, John leapt, but he didn't know Jesus was who he was until he saw the dove light on him land on his shoulder and remain. The dove landed and remained. And he said, behold, mm -hmm. the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And he, uh, he then said that the Lord had spoken to him and told him the one that he saw, the dove land and remain, 
that would be the one. And uh, so I think what happens, people ask, why does revival start and why, do, why does it end? I think it starts because people get desperate and get hungry. I think it ends because the dove, something we make some kind of choice or some have some kind of conversation and the dove leaves. Wow. I'm like, how? How do you get the dove to remain? Mm -hmm. Bill says it like this. Make every step you take with the dove in mind. Everything you do with the dove in mind. Mm -hmm. Now, there may be other things happening in the room, uh, uh, and you, you can't be responsible for that, but you can be responsible for your own self and what you will allow into your heart, into your eyes, into your ears. I, you can, that, that may sound legalistic, but it is the way. It is the way. This is the way. No, absolutely. And I've, I've noticed the same thing. It's, it's kind of like carbon offsets, you know, where these, these Hollywood people who are all into the environment, they'll drive a, a private jet, they'll fly, they'll fly a private jet, but then they'll excuse it because of all the good they do for the environment. It seems like ministry gifts sometimes, sometimes, when they reach a level of accomplishment, they feel like they are afforded a greater level of grace to say certain things or do certain things because of all the amazing things they do for the kingdom. God doesn't really mind a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And I think it's just it's just a little off-putting to me. I don't know if you've experienced the same thing. Yes, we actually, we have this running joke with uh, with my band. Uh, we, we, get, we get so busy sometimes and I'll hear the guys say, Oh, we should we should look into a private plane uh, for some of these trips. And I was like, I don't want a private plane. I want to I want to fly all the miles so I can get my status. <laughs> I, want, I want my executive hard on that. platinum status. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, what yeah. If, I, if I have if I have status, I can get upgrades. Yeah, but if you had your own plane, that is an upgrade. And I said, <laughs> no, I don't want I don't want my private plane. <laughs> That's so funny. But you've done, you've written this amazing book. We just did an interview on the revelation of Jesus and, and extrapolating the worship um, out of the book of the revelation. It really is outstanding. Where can people get a hold of this book? This book is available uh, on all uh, digital platforms. You can get it on iBooks. You can get it on, uh, on Kindle. You have to, the way Kindle works, you know, you have to, it's an account with Amazon. Amazon and Kindle are the same. If you have Kindle, you already know. Uh, it's also uh, available at Barnes and Noble, and uh, plus their streaming uh, platform as well. So you can order it, physical copy on Amazon. Uh, it's available everywhere. And uh, I just, I promise you, uh, you can't go to heaven if you don't have one. <laughs> No, I mean, if you love worship, this is the book for you. If you love the book of Revelation, yeah. this is the book for you. If you love Jesus, this is the book for you. So for all of you, get a hold of this book. The link's in the description of this. Pastor David Binion, we can't thank you enough for taking the time to be with us. I'm honored, sir. It is a delight to meet you. I, I, I can tell you, just by meeting you on the screen, I think we could be friends. I agree. I agree. Well, yeah. let's not think about it. Let's just be friends. <laughs> okay, okay, good, 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 good. What well, we you believe in you. Right? Huh? You've got my number, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So feel, feel, feel obligated to send me random texts, okay? okay. <laughs> obligated to send you. my. Listen, my GIF game is out of this world, so yeah, we can do that for oh, sure. Oh, good, good, good. good. <laughs> but we can't thank you enough for what you mean to the body of Christ uh, through your worship, through your leadership, through your wisdom, and through this amazing book. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Everybody get a hold of your copy of the book, and we'll see you next time right here, Underground. Do you have a voice that's bursting to be heard, or a message that the world needs to hear? If you're a born-again believer, I believe that you do. What if there were some tools that you could get in your hands that would cause you to reach millions for the glory of God? It's time for you to step into the spotlight. At the Armed Media Conference this year, August 3rd, 4th, and 5th, you're going to learn how to turn your passion into impact. You're going to learn from powerhouses like Sean Cannell, Omar El Tafori, Gabe Perot, and many more. They have been where you are, and they're going to show you the secrets of their success. We have packed 
AMC this year with practical tools and strategies for you to master YouTube, podcasting, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and many other platforms. Dive deep into the art of thumbnails, SEO, vertical video, monetization, artificial intelligence, and how it can help you, and much, much more. Plus, you'll be able to connect with like-minded, spirit-filled believers who are on the same journey as you because you're not just attending a conference, you're joining a community. The Armed Media Conference is where God's vision for your ministry and your business becomes a reality. Space is limited, so visit our website to book your spot now, www.armed.media. Take the first steps toward amplifying your voice, and we can't wait to see you there.